Thank you. Now Johnson has another tough call to make. Civil rights leaders are pressuring him to support a voting rights bill, but he knows the timing is bad. Any further civil rights legislation could jeopardize his chances in the upcoming November elections. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Before the 1964 presidential elections, hundreds of volunteers, white and black, traveled to Mississippi to help register black voters. It would later become known as Freedom Summer. Most likely a cop won't try to chunk you in here, but he, he will hit you across here. You can generally take those things. Blacks were legally able to vote, but in many places in the country, when they got to the polling place, they would be given tests on Chaucer, on arcane examples of 14th century English law, things that no one could possibly pass. In, in Alabama, in Georgia, in Mississippi, you had to pass the so-called literacy test. On one occasion, a man was asked to give the number of bubbles in a bar of soap. Despite the efforts of civil rights workers, not enough new black voters are registered to have an impact on the presidential election. At the same time, many Southern white Democrats are leaving the party because of Johnson's strong support of civil rights. Johnson's opponent would be Senator Barry Goldwater of Arizona. Goldwater said, you know, I'm not against civil rights, but I think this bill, the civil rights bill, is unconstitutional. People got the message, especially in the white South, and Johnson was agonized to see that in his home region, very quickly in the polls, Goldwater was getting about 80 percent to Johnson's 20 percent. Uh, the 1964 campaign was the first one in which our family was deeply involved and also the most difficult for us. Uh, my boys who wore Johnson uh, buttons were harassed at school. My middle son Chip was beaten up by people in school. He would come home sometimes with blood on his shirt and the next day he insisted on going back to school still wearing his uh, Democratic button. Johnson wins the election by a landslide, but it's clear He's lost voters in the South, a fact noted by black leaders. Martin Luther King Jr., he had a conversation with uh, President Johnson, and he said, we need a voting rights act. Johnson says, well, I'm for voting rights, but this ain't the time. But civil rights leaders don't want to wait. In the spring of 1965, they pressure Johnson to act, staging a nonviolent march in the little-known town of Selma, Alabama. In Selma, Alabama, in 1965, only 2.1% of blacks of voting age were registered to vote. So on Sunday, March 7, 1965, about 600 of us held a nonviolent workshop. We lined up in twos to walk from Selma to Montgomery to dramatize to the nation that people of color wanted to register to vote. We came to the apex of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, crossing the Alabama River. On the other side, you saw a sea of blue, Alabama State Troopers. We continue to walk without anyone saying a word. We get within hearing distance of the State Troopers. A man identified himself and said, I'm Major John Cloud of the Alabama State Troopers. This is an unlawful march. We'll not be allowed to continue. I give you three minutes to disperse and return to your church. In about a minute and a half, Major John Cloud said, Troopers advance. Advance toward the group. See that they turn around and disperse. You saw these men put in on their gas. They came toward us. <laughs> Beating us with knife sticks and bull whips shrimping us with horses, releasing the tear gas. I was hit in the head by a state trooper with a knife stick. It had a concussion there at the bridge. I thought I was going to die. A lot of white Americans were on the fence on civil rights. Then they saw those pictures on television from Selma, that was something new and horrible. It converted a lot of Americans. 
Johnson clearly saw that march as something that would help him get the Voting Rights Act passed. Johnson calls Congress to an extraordinary nighttime session, demanding that they pass his voting rights bill. And for the first time in history, an American president speaks the credo of the civil rights movement. I will never, ever forget the speech. Lyndon Johnson spoke to a joint session of the Congress as he spoke to the nation. He started that speech off that night by saying, I speak tonight for the dignity of man and for and the, the destiny, destiny of democracy. At times, history and fate meet at a single time, in a single place, to shape a turning point in man's unending search for freedom. So it was last week in Selma, Alabama. The harsh fact is that in many places in this country, men and women are kept from voting simply because they are Negroes. Their cause must be our cause too. Because it's not just Negroes, but really it's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. hair on the back of my neck still stands straight when I think about that. His mood after that, that speech was exultant. I mean, you know, I think great politicians are like great actors. They know when they've given a great performance. And he felt it because to be in that chamber and to feel what was going on, they moved through that hall like a twanging wire, an excitement. I wept. I was watching his uh, speech on television, and it, and it sent a, a wave of, uh, of transforming uh, opinions and uh, realities, not only throughout the rest of the country, but also through the South. I was sitting with Martin Luther King Jr. in the home of a local family in Selma, when we heard Linda Johnson say, and we shall overcome. We knew then that we would make it from Selma to Montgomery, we knew then that the Voting Rights Act would be passed and signed into law by Lyndon Johnson. The Voting Rights Act is passed, and exuberant Johnson flies home to Texas. It was an enormous high. He not only passed voting rights, we just signed Medicare. Oh, I mean, I, th I think he thought this would be one of the things that would mark his reputation in history forever. And he wanted to be the education president, the health president, but most of all, he wanted to be the civil rights president.